Every pattern pack design deserves a battery gauge, even when you step down to the 12 volt. Apparently some of them think saving a dollar is worth it. So, but we can make up for their shortcomings. Here's the Milwaukee M12 version, and those are one of the few that do not come with an actual battery gauge, even on their larger capacity batteries. So you pick one up off the shelf and you have no idea that you used it for a minute, or you have no idea if you accidentally just set it down, if it has a charge, unless you actually put it in the tool and run the tool up, and then you know, oh, it's only half charged. So we can fix that by putting a meter on it, and it's cheap and easy. So I've put my own battery gauges in some of my batteries. These right here are Porter cables, and I did these years ago, and I actually even did a video on them. This is what I'm using. It's this. They're only about three millimeters thick, an eighth inch by about an inch and a half by whatever that is in millimeters. So I pay right around two to three dollars for these. I'm pretty, you're pretty much just paying shipping. I'm sure these cost like 12 cents, you know, but I was looking at this battery pack and this is one of Milwaukee M12's larger battery packs and I have plenty of room to put it right here in the top. There's actually almost, there's a, almost a quarter inch from the top of here down to the top of the battery packs. It's actually just kind of hollow there. I could probably squeeze it on the sides as well. So they sell these things in a couple different figurations. 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S, 7S, and, and up. And what that means is how many cells are in series. A 12 volt is actually three cells in series. So one, two, three, positive, negative, just like a regular battery you'd put in a kid's toy. You measure the outside, you're gonna be 12 volts roughly, you know, fully charged. Um, that's what this meter would do is it actually measure on the both ends. But like this one right here is a 2S. It doesn't matter, I can use it in a 12 pack just by measuring between these two cells. Yes, I'm only taking the voltage of these two, but the whole, the, they should give me a excellent representation of the entire pack charge because it's not like, because these are all balanced charged inside there with the charger and everything else like that. So I can do that. Some of these are only 1S, and so I could just, I mean, I could just take the, uh, the reading off of one of these cells anywhere in there. I mean, you can just wire it. I found that, you know, on these packs that are 5S, it was much easier to find um, these things. 5S was almost impossible to find. Uh, I found it much easier to find 3S, 4S, and I've been using those in these packs. Uh, this one's a 2S, you know, and it'll show me exactly what charge is on there. I don't know what that one is. I, I wrote on them on the outside of some of them. That was probably a 5S. Nope, that one's a 2S. I know that one. And so it doesn't really matter find the cheapest one and get it. So all we gotta do is take this apart and start wiring it up. We do need one thing. Almost all these battery packs are the exact same. They use a Torx. This one's a T10, which seems to be about, some of them actually I think use a T15, but they are a security Torx. It just has a little dimple in the middle of the Torx. These are cheap. I'll put a link below where you can pick those up on Amazon, but that's all, all we need to do to take these apart. Just, Throw those aside. We've got all of our four screws out and the bottom just pops off. The sticker kind of holds it. We don't really need any of this in this pack. The top even pops out and you're ready to move along. And now we can just cut out the exact size, exact size groove that we need for this to be able to mount it. Now we can take a file or something, try and clean it up. Just make it so it fits it nice. So I got it all filed up nice, so it fits in there. This one right here is a 1S, and I've used, I pulled this out of a pack that I had already used before, so that's why it's all kind of goobery. But 1S, one cell. So we can see in here, we could just tie off, you know, these battery cells are exactly like, you know, your double A's and triple A's and everything else like that, where one, the flat side's negative. The little uh, nub is positive. And so I could just take one S, just goes off one of those cells, and you can see it says it's fully charged. Now, if it was a two S, I would have to just bring your multimeter in there. And since each one of these cells is about four volts, just find across two where you get eight volts. And if you did three S, you might actually have to take off the top and you could tie into the exact terminals on the top so you could tie off, I mean, you could solder just directly to these two terminals. You, put, you have enough wire in there if you have a 3S to do your three cells, if that makes sense. But 
put that on, and we'll just solder to each side of there. So I know people will say, whoa, you can't solder these cells. We're not actually soldering directly to the cells. We're soldering to the tabs, which is just fine. They solder to the tabs everywhere. And I also solder to cells. I don't really care. You just don't have to put, just don't put too much heat into it. But to solder to these, um, these tabs, they work way better if you just roughen them up just a little bit. So we'll just, you can file them or something else like that. I'll just take the Dremel real fast and just touch them. I'm using a, a flux. And so that just helps it flow out better. So I'm going to pre-tin them. So before I even try to attempt to do my wiring, I'm going to get this as hot as possible. This is a momentary soldering iron. And all we're doing is getting a glob of solder on there. That's pre-tinning. Good glob right here. And since this is pre-tinned and we this is pre-tinned, all we have to do is just, you know, instantaneous, just touch it and it's good. We don't have to sit there and dump a ton of heat into it. We'll go do the other side. There we go. Now I'll just tuck these wires out of the way where they're not going to interfere with other wires. I decided to put a little electrical tape in some areas just where I had exposed contacts, just as a double double protection. There's actually a pretty big cavity up under here, so we have plenty of room for all these wires. Get them to where we think we're, we're going to have them. Get the hot glue ready. And just go for it. Don't feel it at all. Exactly what I want. Looks completely factory unless you're really looking at it. There we go, Milwaukee shortcomings are now fixed. This uh, six cell pack, now you can actually pick it up and read the battery gauge. I need to do it to this this nine cell pack that I built right here um, a couple months ago. I have a video on this, nine cells, six amp hour. This is, this. is The more cells you have in parallel, the stronger they are. It's like I built these eight amp hour packs, which are 20 cell packs out of two smaller ones. And these things just rock. The tool works so much cooler, so much better with these, uh, I mean, yeah, it's bulkier, but I really don't feel the difference on these tools. And I actually think it, it balances them better. But I have a video on that, I'll put a link below. Um, I'll put a link down in the video description of where to find these. I get them directly from usually AliExpress, sometimes eBay, but AliExpress seems to be the best. It's the only place I can really find them. Um, but I'll put a link below and in the description, I'll kind of write a uh, blog of what you need to look for. But thanks for watching guys. If you wanna check out the video on building bigger packs for your batteries, you can check out that as well. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. Okay, get it. Boom. Good job. You didn't touch the hula hoop. Good job. You ready? Since you're a ground dog, you ready? Get it. Get it.